Right now, the day's biggest news stories from a Vegas perspective. This is the Vegas Take with Sharp and Shapiro. What's up, Vegas? It is the Vegas Take. Happy Friday. Oh, yeah, we got a lot to get to today. A lot to get to, a lot to go over, and, you know, so many different areas that we could start. We're going to certainly start with the Mitt Romney backlash. We'll get to that in just a few minutes here, but this is going to be a lot of fun. Our friend of the show, uh, Congressman, he's also a war hero, Seth Moulton, is going to be joining us coming up at the bottom of the hour. The reason why we wanted him on today is because he was one of the few Democrats that walked out right in the middle of the State of the Union address. So he's going to be joining us at the bottom of the hour. We're going to ask him why. What is it that triggered him to leave? Why did he even show up in the first place? We'll talk to Seth Moulton again coming up here at the bottom of the hour. Listen, if you're a Rush Limbaugh fan, you're going to love our number two. Trust me. We're going to play a game called Rush Jeopardy. It's a quiz, so to speak, of Rush Limbaugh, and we're going to be playing that, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. And like I said, if you're a Rush Limbaugh fan, you will love it. So you'll want to stay tuned for that coming up in hour number two. Uh, trust me, hour number three is going to be just as interesting because we have a woman in studio by the name of Roxanne Price. She works at Sherry's Ranch. It's it's one of those bunny ranches. I believe this one uh, is in Pahrump. And we did a story yesterday about how these sex dolls are hurting the uh, sex industry as far as these ranches go, <laughs> these chicken ranches. And Roxanne Price is one of those people that's going to tell us that she is actually losing money and she is losing clients and customers because of these sex dolls. It is interesting, fascinating, and I think our producer is one of those people that's taking business. uh, These dolls are taking business away from Roxanne. So we'll be joined by her coming up in our number three. Chris Bryant, uh, of course, he is one of the best hitters in all of baseball, and he grew up right here in Las Vegas. He actually had a batting practice yesterday at the ballpark. And Chris Bryant was asked about this cheating scandal, and his comments were very interesting. They made some headlines, so we'll go over that, talk about that. Of course, we're talking about the Houston Astros uh, stealing signs and knowing what pitches were coming, that sort of deal. So we'll talk about that coming up in hour number three. I want to start with the Mitt Romney backlash. Let, let Let me start from square here, okay? I voted for Mitt Romney. And the reason why, and the reason why I supported Mitt Romney is because I think he's a decent man. And when I talk to uh, about voting, you know, I vote maybe differently than a lot of other people. I vote based on, number one, is this guy a good dude? And I thought there were two good men that were running for president back then. Two good people in Barack Obama and Mitt Romney. I really did. And I look at Mitt Romney, and I do believe he's a man of faith. I'm not an extremely religious man. Mitt Romney is a very religious guy as a Mormon, and... You know, I certainly uh, don't agree with some of his stances on certain issues. I certainly don't agree politically with him on a lot of different subjects. But, you know, Mitt Romney has flip-flopped in the past. He, But, you know, name me a politician that hasn't flip-flopped. I can name you a gazillion of them. He's changed his mind from time to time, and he has a right to change his mind. But one thing I will say about Mitt Romney is I think he's a decent man. I think he's a good guy. I don't think Mitt Romney is a bad guy. And he had to know the consequences if he voted Donald Trump guilty the other day. He had to know what those consequences were. And he's been asked about it, and he said he expects unimaginable consequences after this impeachment vote. And he's right. So why do you think Mitt Romney did this? Certainly, it didn't gain him political points, that's for sure. So why do you think he did it? Well, I can only come to one conclusion, because he thought it was the right thing to do. I'm only going to go by what he said. He thought it was the right thing to do. He could look at his kids and his grandkids and say, I took the oath. I did what I thought was the right thing to do. And you know what? I commend him for that. I'm not going to call him a hero, but I do think it took a little bit of courage to do what he did. He knew that there was going to be a tremendous backlash. And again, he was one of those people that voted for witnesses. But the backlash he is getting is absolutely unbelievable, unfair, ridiculous. This is what this is what they're doing now. This is what the right is they're doing. In fact, it is the White House. That's right. The White House that is coming up with talking points to go after Mitt Romney. Apparently, the White House is sending around anti-Romney talking points, according to Ashley Parker, who is a reporter, including Romney's decision 
uprising as this display of self-serving political expedience now come to define his career, which is completely ridiculous. If you want to call this self-serving, it's the opposite of self-serving, what Mitt Romney did. That is the dumbest talking point I've ever heard in my life. This was the opposite of self-serving when he decided to vote Donald Trump guilty in Article 1. How could you say that's self-serving? It's the opposite. Part of these talking points that the White House is putting out, which are despicable, also saying that Romney has a long history of flip-flopping with no sign of principles to be found. Well, I guess you could say that about a lot of other people like Mitch McConnell, and many others, many Republicans who have flip-flopped on a number of issues. Funny, the White House isn't putting out those talking points about Lindsey Graham, the flip-flopper himself. I don't think the guy's ever taken off his flip-flops. I, it just, it, to me, it's just so disgusting. At least one high-profile Republican uh, do, saying reports is ignoring the smear campaign. House Republican Conference Chair Liz Cheney, and good for her. She said yesterday she disagrees with Romney's vote on impeachment, but added he's a real value for us to have in the Senate. She said Senator Romney is a good and honorable man. I don't think anybody ought to question his faith. And she's right. And that's coming from Dick Cheney's wife. It's just so disgusting, and these Fox News hosts are piling it on as well. Let's start with Megan McCain and Whoopi Goldberg, who got into it on The View the other day. Have a listen to this. I'm just glad somebody stood up and said no. But that's fine. Yeah. But, uh, and I don't... But and, what you want, like, but that's what he wants. But I that's okay. You know what? I have media, a, I'm going to give, I'm gonna give faith in him, him like I gave you to your dad. Ago. I don't, I'm I, giving I, with faith. With all due respect, Mitt Romney's I'm, nothing like my dad. I am giving as much faith <clears throat> because I don't agree with Mitt Romney, <clears throat> but he stood up in a way that nobody else has except for your dad. So but I'm saying to you, the idea that that's I'm, for me. But I'm just saying don't put all your bets on Romney right now. I don't will put, break your heart. No. Don't put all your bets on Romney right now. you break your heart. My daddy, my daddy, my daddy. That is the moron, the clown that is Meghan McCain. And by the way, her daddy, if not for her daddy, she certainly would not be on The View and nobody would know who the hell she was because she's an ignoramus. She is a moron. And Whoopi Goldberg is absolutely right. And you can make in this specific situation, because I didn't always agree with John McCain, but you can make that comparison here. I don't always agree with Whoopi Goldberg either, but she's right. What Mitt Romney did is very similar to what John McCain did, you know, when he voted against uh, the Republicans, the health care situation. It's the same thing. He knew that there would be backlash, but he decided to stand up for his own principles and his own conscience. And I believe John McCain did the right thing, just as Mitt Romney did the right thing the other day. So Whoopi Goldberg is absolutely right. And Meghan McCain should shut her face. I say that about her every day, though. The stupid stuff that comes out of her mouth on a regular basis. Her and Donald Trump have a lot in common. I don't know if she realizes that. And what about Fox? What about Fox News? Have a listen to what these people are saying. Tucker Carlson, Laura Ingram, and Lou Dobbs. Have a listen to what they're saying about this Mitt Romney vote. It is unbelievable. Romney is going to be associated with uh, Judas, uh, Brutus, uh, Benedict Arnold forever uh, when he is not even a footnote in a footnote otherwise uh, because of his, uh, of his betrayal. He's the ultimate selfish, preening, self-centered politician. He has good hair and a sort of okay singing voice. An overwrought ethics lecture from a private equity guy? Huh. Next thing you know, some payday loan sleazeball will be telling us we're all going to hell. It's just too absurd, even for the ludicrous moment we're living in. Welcome to Fox News, ladies and gentlemen. By the way, if I told you I was talking about an individual in politics and I said selfish, self-centered, ethics issues, what would you say? You'd probably say you must be talking about Donald Trump, right? Well, the evil racist witch in Laura Ingram has never said anything like that about Donald Trump. None of those people have ever said anything about the president. But now they're going after Mitt Romney. Oh, and by the way, this guy was their nominee back in 2012, just eight years ago. So what does that say about you? You want to talk, talk about this guy and call him selfish and self-centered, ethics issues? This guy was your nominee. But all of a sudden, if you do anything to make Donald Trump look bad, if you speak the truth, good heavens, we're going to go after you. The White House is going to send out talking points, and most Fox News hosts, just about all of them, are going to go after you. It is disgusting, and it is disgraceful. Would you expect anything different from Lou Dobbs, Tucker Carlson, and Laura Ingram? Really, would you? And what about Hugh Hewitt? 
Yeah, what a shocker by the guy by the name of Hugh Hewitt is a Trump supporter going after Mitt Romney for doing the right thing. This is Hugh Hewitt calling out Joe Biden now for saying Rush. Uh, well, I'm sorry, that's a different cut. We're going to get to that, but that's Rush Limbaugh. We'll get to that in a little bit. But, that, I mean, listen, how disgusting the times that we are in right now where it doesn't matter if you do the right thing. It doesn't matter if you vote your conscience. It doesn't matter to these Republicans. It, it just it, it's, it's ridiculous to me. It doesn't make any sense. It's wrong. It's absurd. And like I said, I voted for Mitt Romney. And the reason why I did because I think he's a decent guy. You think it's fair for everybody on the right now to be attacking this guy except for maybe a few? Except for maybe Liz Cheney? If you watched Fox News all day yesterday, every single host was going after Mitt. Every single host. Even Laura Ingram said that she would run against him in four and a half years if she had to, which we know that would never happen because she's a liar. But it just it, to me, it just doesn't make any sense. It's absolutely and positively ridiculous. But that's what these Republicans do. God forbid if Nancy Pelosi rips up a copy of the impeachment, or I'm sorry, a copy of the speech that Donald Trump made in the State of the Union the other day, God forbid if that happens, then it's World War III, right? You've got Matt Gates, DUI Matt, saying he wants to... Uh, put criminal charges in to Nancy Pelosi for ripping up an official document because apparently a copy of a document is an official document. Matt Gates is too dumb to understand that. But God forbid if, if somebody rips up, you know, a, a copy of a speech, it's World War III, that's okay. But if the president of the United States withholds aid for personal gain, and even Republicans agree what he did was totally wrong, they're going to keep quiet about it, though. That's okay. The Fox News, Laura Ingram's, Tucker Carlson's of the world want to go after Mitt Romney for voting his conscience. And I absolutely believe 110 percent in that speech that we played yesterday when Mitt Romney was describing his vote. I 100 percent believe he was being genuine. He got emotional during that speech. By the way, other than, you know, Donald Trump insulting people, have you ever seen Donald Trump do that before? Have you ever seen him get up there on a stage and actually get teary eyed and emotional? He's given out a lot of awards to a lot of heroes before, right? His hero, Rush Limbaugh, you know. Did you see him ever get teary-eyed? Have you ever seen Rush, Have you ever seen Donald Trump in, a, in an honest, emotional moment where he actually showed emotion and caring towards someone else? You ever seen him do that before? I haven't. Mitt Romney did that the other day. And you know what? He should be commended for that. But Republicans won't do that. The right-wing nut jobs that do radio and TV, are going to go after Mitt Romney. And all they're going to say is, oh, he's done in four, four and a half years. He's out of there. He's out of there. What they're not going to say and what they're not going to actually talk about is the fact what he did was right. And many other Republicans agree, but they're too much of a coward, like Susan Collins, the coward Susan Collins. They're too much of a coward with no backbone to vote that way. The evidence was overwhelming, folks, and we didn't even hear all the evidence. We didn't hear from Mulvaney, and it looks like we're never going to hear from Mulvaney because it looks like he's going to be fired. We didn't hear from John Bolton. Looks like he's going to put in his book exactly what took place. That is a quid pro quo. We didn't hear under oath Lev Parnas, who keeps on releasing videos and more evidence that he was actually a lot closer to the president than the president wants to lead on. Remember when the president said, I don't know Lev Parnas. Don't know the guy. Well, then why are you talking policy with him and why are you talking about firing certain members of the administration and the ambassador with Lev Parnas if you have no idea who he is? Number to call 702-257-5396 if you want to be a part of this conversation. 702-257-5396. I personally believe that the backlash that Mitt Romney is getting is utterly disgusting. It absolutely and positively disgusts me. Here's a man who voted his conscience, and now people are calling for him to step down. Now people are calling for him to leave office. In fact, even worse, they're getting personal with him. If you listen to right-wing radio, if you listen to the television, if you watch Fox News, they're saying some pretty nasty things about Mitt Romney. Why? Name me one thing that Mitt Romney has done in his career. One thing, negative, and I'll, I'll tell you right now, I'll guarantee you Donald Trump has done far worse. I guarantee you that. 
It makes zero sense. These are what people on the right are doing. These are what Laura Ingram, Tucker Carlson, Lou Dobbs, that's what these people are doing. And now we learn this news story that the White House is putting out talking points to go after Mitt Romney. I mean, can you imagine that? Can you imagine if Barack Obama put out talking points to go after a Republican? There would be an unbelievable amount of backlash. But this is what the White House is doing now. Why? Mitt Romney didn't do anything wrong. He certainly didn't break the law. He said he voted his conscience, and I'm going to believe him on that. I believe him when he says that. What I can't believe, and I guess it shouldn't be shocking to me, is the way Republicans are reacting to this, the way the Republicans are behaving. And yes, there are a few out there that are defending Mitt Romney, even the ones that don't agree with his vote. And I do agree with it, by the way. But even the ones that don't, there's a few that are saying, listen, he's good for our party. Just knock it off. Leave him alone. Th- this is what they do. This is what the right does. Again, that number to call if you want to be a part of the program, 702-257-5396. And again, that number to call, 257-5396. Let's start off with Carl. Carl, what's going on? How you doing, buddy? Good. Uh, listen, um, you uh, Trump is all excited and uh, wants to go after Pelosi about ripping up a copy of his speech. Well, do you remember when he had the Russian ambassadors in his uh, the Oval Office and all the notes taken down by the stenographers were then destroyed. I remember those were those yep. were official notes of the meeting because God knows what he said to the Russians. Uh, he probably uh, gave everything to them, and uh, he didn't want anybody to see it. Yeah, no, so I remember. Is that, yep. is that any worse or any better? No, <laughs> you know. But this is but this ridiculous. is something. But this is something we've we've grown accustomed to, right? If you wrong well, Donald Trump in any way, shape, or form, if you go after him in any way, shape, or form. He's going to go after you. Now the White House is, is sending out talking points that we're learning to go after Mitt Romney because, oh, God forbid, he flip-flopped on something. You know well, you I mean? Know he's, yeah, you know why he's going after Romney? He's jealous of Romney, and I'll tell you why. Romney is an extremely – his father started American Motors. He's an extremely wealthy man worth hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. And if, and if you ever checked Trump's tax form – if you know anything about finances, yep. uh, how your how your net worth is is calculated is your mm-hmm. debt uh, against your your assets against what you owe. Well, I mean, there's a simple and, way, but Carl, and, and he owes more than he's got. I, I, well, you. listen, Carl, I agree with you, but there's a simple you know there's a simple way of explaining that. Why won't you show your tax returns? And don't give me this, well, he doesn't have to. The law says he doesn't have to. Listen, there's a reason why he doesn't want to show his tax returns to us, and I think it's pretty obvious, and it comes down to two things. First of all, he's not worth anywhere near as much as he claims to be worth, number one. And number two, I wouldn't be surprised if there was criminal activity. Simple as that. What do you think about Mitt Romney? What do you think about the backlash that the right has gone after him over the course of the last 48 hours? I think it is utterly disgusting. The number to call, 702-257-5396. Let's go to Robin. Robin, you're next up in the Vegas Take. What's going on? Hey, um, I just, it's nice to hear someone uh, talking about both sides. Um, I generally vote Republican. Um, I did vote for Trump just because I didn't think uh, the Democratic Party uh, had a leg to stand on. Um, I still don't, and I'll probably vote for Trump again. Um, I will say that uh, the way everyone acts, uh, politicians, Mm -hmm. uh, television and radio personalities, it's all adolescent. I mean, good Lord, are we in junior high? It's it's ridiculous, and I would love to see some maturity and some real thoughts. Robin, well, let me. Well, here's a real thought, Robin. R- Robin, let me ask you a question here. So, you said you voted for Trump, right, in 2016? I did. Okay, so is there anything that the Democrats can do? To get you on the other side, is there a candidate or somebody that you could see on the other side, a Democrat, that you could vote for to vote against Donald Trump? Is there is there somebody out there? Not yet. Interest. So there's really. So so tell me why you would vote for him again in 2020, because I want to hear you out on this. Um, he's, I think he's done a great job for the country financially. I'm making money hand over fist since he's been in office. My 401k has skyrocketed. Um, I'm actually going to be buying a home for the first time. I'm 50 years old, and I'm, for the first time in my life, I can afford to buy a home since Donald Trump has been in office. So, because uh, maybe I'm ignorant to this, can you tell me exactly what policies he's put in place to help buy you a home? 
You know, I don't know. See, that's the problem. Whatever he's doing is working. Well, here's here's okay. Listen, here's what I'll say to that. I'm not going to tell you. I'm I am not a a political aficionado. I understand, and that's okay, and that's all right. What happens? I just know what my life and what's happening in in my home, in my neighborhood, in my town. I understand. I I, I can't speak. For political professionals, I'm not one, and I will never claim to be. I understand. Okay. And, uh, listen, Robin, I understand, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just trying to get inside your head and trying to figure out. Here's the way I think, and maybe we think a little bit differently. I look at the unemployment numbers that are down, but when we talk about the economy, the ones that are benefiting the most uh, are the are extremely wealthy and the rich. And I think it's uh, you know one percent of middle class America that's actually. I don't think that's true. Well, it's a fact. I'm, I mean, not, I'm, I'm just giving you a fact on the economy. I mean, I'm not. I'm not one of those one Okay. I make less than fifty thousand dollars a year. Okay, so what is the raise? So how, how, how do you explain that? Well, I'm tr- I'm trying to get you to explain it because you said you would vote for I Trump. Don't, I don't know how to explain it. All I know is it's happening. Okay, well, did you not get any raises under Barack Obama in eight years? Do you know how the unemployment? I did not. I, I got it. I got. Yes, I did. My employer gave me a one and a half percent raise. Okay. And but this year, this year, I got a seven percent raise, which is great. And, which is okay. Oh, I want to tell you something else. I work in the medical industry. Yes. Okay. I, I work for mom. So, uh, you know, that's huge. So, so when Obama was in office, I got one point three percent actually, and uh, and then seven percent raise. Sure. Now, well, since, well, listen. Let me so say this, huge. Robin. No, I don't know how to explain. Okay. It. No, I understand, Robin. First of all, let me say this. I'll state the obvious. I'm happy for you that you got a seven percent raise, and I think that's fantastic. And I, I truly am genuinely happy for you. But here's what I would also say: when I vote and when I look at the economy, I'm not just thinking about myself. I'm thinking about all of America, particularly the middle class and the people that are struggling. If you look at the economy, and if you don't believe me, you could look up the numbers yourself. Yes, unemployment. Oh, no. Hold on, let me, hold on. Hold on. Let me just. Let me just. Finish. No. Let me hold on, Robin. Hang on. Let me just finish. Let me just finish my thought. If you look at the unemployment numbers, yes, they're down. Certainly, there was a big spark when Obama took office. He took over a mess under George W. Bush, uh, and, and the numbers have continued to go down. However, there's a lot of people, mothers and and fathers, that are working two or three jobs. Their sal- many in America, their salaries have not gone up. I just think that's a very important point. Listen, I want you to do what you feel is best for you. You have the right to vote any way you want to vote, and I am happy for you that you are doing uh, and prospering and doing very well. The only thing I would say to you, Robin, is I'm not sure the policies that Donald Trump have put in place helps middle class America. That's that's just that I would... am in the middle class Americans, and my friends and neighbors who are also middle class Americans are also reaping the benefits of uh, financial successes since Trump has been in office. Okay, and, my and, that's what it comes, and maybe that's what it comes down to for for me. And I, I guess I can't speak for my friends and neighbors, but it's. Financially, I'm okay. doing. I'm I get doing, it. I'm doing better. I get it, Robin, and I'm and I'm happy for you. But I think we're going around in circles here. And again, what I will tell you is this: you do not represent everybody in this country, middle class America. You seem to be a, a great exception to the fact. But a lot of people that I talk to are struggling. A lot of people that I talk to, some mothers out there working ten dollar, eleven dollar an hour jobs, working two or three jobs, particularly in Las Vegas. And when I, this is the thing that's troubling to me. When I talk to a Trump supporter and they say I'm going to vote for him in 2020. What policies has he put in place to help you? And they don't know how to answer that. We're going to take a break when we come back. Congressman Seth Moulton will be back right after this. And we'll be back right after this. And we'll be back right after this. And we'll be back right after this.